Hi guys, yeah, it's that time of the year. Summer's coming to an end and it's time to think about what we're doing for September and some of you August. Today, I'm going to show you how to turn a quick PDF or any kind of typical super teacher worksheet into a Google slide, the basics. So by all means, I am a novice. This is just a basic way of doing it. There are other ways, again, there are other ways of doing this, I'm sure, that this is the way that um, I kind of picked it up. And this is what helped me get through making all of my PDFs, typical traditional worksheets, into a Google slide. So thanks again for subscribing to my TeacherTube channel. And I'm going to show you how to make a document into a Google slide. Here it goes. Hi guys. Okay, so here we are. And I wanted to start off um, by showing you one of the Google slide projects that um, I used over the summer for my students. So um, this example is basically from a basic um, measuring activity. Um, where the students were obviously virtual, they were at home, and I wanted to incorporate some measurement activities. And we use this particular um, Google slide because the students were supposed to work um, during IXL. And in order to work on IXL and kind of change up the pace and activities, I had a supplement activity to give them in terms of measuring. So what I like to use the super teacher worksheets and things like that um, and, and turn them into a Google slide as a supplemental activity um, in addition to their kind of like the, the meat of the lesson. Um, so whether this could be homework or a warm up, something like that. So this is something from July 30th that my um, students used. And basically there was a uh, slide one. I'm really basic guys, okay? Um, this is slide one and kind of like a cover page. And I told them today what they're going to learn about, just in case you have those students who don't need the verbal directions and all of that stuff um, in the front loading. So I put the written directions here. As this is a review, it's important for you to remember these skills. Um, so I wanted them to watch a video, so I copied and pasted the video here on slide number one. Um, Okay, so this is an example of slide number two. Again, it's a little blurry. Um, it was the end of the summer. I knew they, they could do this, but honestly, using Google Slides sometimes is a great way to just kind of assess what and how some of the other students are working. And again, this is summer school, so I wasn't familiar with all of the students in my group. So this was also just a means of assessment. And these are things that they should have learned in first and second grade. But again, I just wanted to show you basically the um, kind of ways that I um, highlight my text boxes. And when they click um, two times in the text box, now it allows them to type their answers and they can respond to this just like a worksheet or a document. So I started off with inches, and then I think I just kind of wanted to see if they could do centimeters and things like that. So we're going to start over as if we um, are starting a brand new activity. So for example, a lot of teachers, I'm so grateful, are still a little old school like me. Um, sometimes I don't like to admit that, but I like to go on super teacher works. Uh, super teacher worksheets, and I'm just browsing around at some of the worksheets, blah, blah, blah. And here it is. So say I want to use this um, document from Super Teacher Worksheets. So on my computer, it's important for you to understand the capabilities of your computer, whether you have a Mac, um, whatever. Each computer has a way to take a screenshot of what you're looking at. Um, it could be a camera feature. It could be an option like Snippet. And that's the tool that I have. And I'm going to use my Snippet tool by pressing three buttons. So for me, it's the shift button, a Windows button, and S. Now, once I did this, you'll see my screen darken, and now there's a rectangular snip as my option. That's what I'm going to press. Again, I'm gonna use my snippet tool. Now I'm going to kind of highlight what I want. So just say I wanted this on my first slide. So I'm gonna let it go. And when I let it go, it's going to pull up something to my clipboard. Every computer is different. I'm imagining that my screenshot method might be a way, a different way of yours. So I'm going to save it. I like this one. Just say, I'm just using this as an example. So I'm going to save this piece. 
And that piece looks exactly like a Google slide. So I'm gonna call it slide one, August 15th. You can name it whatever you want to name it. Okay, so let's just say that's only slide one, but I wanna go down here and catch a few questions. Um, I'm gonna use shift the Windows button in S. Again, your computer might be different. So I'm going to drag what I want Okay, I'm not happy with that, the way I drag that, so I can start all over again, only because I'm, you know, I'm familiar with my snippet tool, but let's just say I want to snip this inset. Okay, so now it's going to give me a second one. This is what I did over the summer. I don't know if this is the easiest way to do it, but this is a way of me capturing what is on my screen and what is on that worksheet. Um, I'm gonna call this, Slide two, August 15th. Okay, so now I wanna use those two pictures and put them in a Google slide. So forgive me, this always seems to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna press my waffle by the way. It always seems to take a long time when I'm presenting something on Screencastify. <laughs> so I'm gonna press my waffle, I'm going, I'm going to go into my drive and start a new slide. So I went to slides and I want to start a new presentation. So I'm gonna click the um, blank. Okay, so this is going to be my first slide. I want to, again, like I said, it takes a while. So let's just recap what we did. Number one priority is find out how to take a picture or at least a snippet of what you see on your computer. Just imagine all of the things, all of the wonderful ideas from everyone else that you can give yourself less of a headache and just snip it, especially if it's a colleague or um, a coach or something that they offer and say, hey, use this. If you can take that picture from your computer from a snippet tool, you can plug it right into a slide. And I really recommend playing around with this. Um, so let's just call this August 15th measurement okay and layout again i'm a little rusty here because summer school is over so i went to layout and i wanted a blank layout because what i'm going to do is i'm going to use those two pictures one at a time i'm going to use those pictures and i'm going to make it my background so i'm going to put background that image is going to be i have to look for the image right the two images that we just took um that was an upload from a file, so I'm gonna browse. Um, and that background is not going to be editable. The students are not going to be able to touch it because we're using the whole image as your document. Okay, so what did we call that? We called it slide something, slide August 15th. And let's just see what happens. This is live, I didn't plan this video. Um, I just saw someone who was having trouble on a social media platform and I figured, hey, let's make a video about it. What we did was we used that first um, picture that we saved and we plugged it into our, our first slide. And again, this is just how to use any of the teacher pay teachers, super teacher worksheets um, and plug it right into the slide. The students will get a copy of their own. So how do they answer? How do the students answer? So this says, compete, huh? It's supposed to be complete the table. Look at that, they messed up, ha, ha. Okay, um, it's pretty surprising actually. So note to self, always read over your documents before you use them. So um, again, this is just an example, complete the table, then use the table to answer the questions below. You want the students one foot equals 12 inches, two feet equals 24 inches. Honestly, my small group, they might not be able to do this, However, the reason why I'm reading this to you is because you want to allow them to type here. And in order for them to type on this document and for you to grade it, you're going to have to add a text box. So I just clicked the T for text box and I wanna put it right here. And it's gonna allow them to type once you make that text box. Now, I made the text box, you can see it's blue here. But if I jump over and, and say that I'm finished with it, it's not going to have a defined um, outline. So in this case, since it's a tutorial, I'm going to show you, go to your sandwich up here and make a border. 
because you want them to see some kind of box. I know for my students, they needed a box. So let's just make it, um, you can make it one point that's not going to be as thick and we can just keep it black if you want. If I jump over, you can see that there's a box. Now I have a coworker who uses purple or red. So you can do that one and then you can make the border a different color, maybe blue. So now the students will recognize every time they see this blue box, I think we should make it a little bit more defined. So you can make it a two, two point in that you could see the box is a little bit more defined. And the students are, oh, I always write in the speaker notes, double, you know, double click two times your mouse in order to, you know, type in the text box. Some students say, I can't type, I can't type. Um, that's, I always try to leave them a note. Double click in the text box to type your answer. So I always leave that little message there. Now, easy way of doing this. Now that you've made one of them, you could just copy that box and paste it. Every time I do that, it always goes over there and you just kind of drag it over to where you want to go. I'm going to do that again. Copy it. Yep. It should paste it. I guess I could have just pasted it anyway, right? And then drag that box where I want them to type their answer. And again, I'm going to paste that box that we just made. So I'm gonna put it over here and I'm gonna drag it to where I want the students to type. And then for this question down here, why not? I want another text box. So I'm going to paste it because they need to put their answer somewhere. Now, honestly, if you wanna go crazy and make your box all fancy, you wanna change the border weight and all that stuff, you wanna make it match the line of your worksheet, that's fine. But notice how we just edited that. I wanna take off my mouse pointer. Okay, so notice how we just um, you know, made that box a little bigger. So once, let me tell you, once the students do a few of these slides, they are going to get it. They're going to understand, hey, every time the teacher gives me a colored box, that's for me to put my answer. So if you do a plus sign here, it's going to make a new. Okay, so friends, we are making the second slide. So we pressed the plus button to add a new slide. And now we want to use that background and get that image that we saved before. So I'm going to go to choose image. And that was a file that we saved. So you're going to browse. I'm not really good at organizing my files, but I would suggest now that I've had summer school virtually and all the remote learning since March, I would suggest that you really organize yourself so that you can get those images um, in one or from one file. Like if it's a math folder, I would definitely do that. Or if you have all your super teacher worksheets that you want to use, I would keep them all in that. Anywho, so I think we labeled this slide two. So we'll go to slide two open and it's going to plug it right into the background of that slide. So now this is the background. So one thing that I like is that the students can't alter. I'm just gonna move my face. Um, the students can't alter your document or their document per se. All they can do is type into the text box. So the first thing is you're going to go to the T for the text box and you're gonna get that plus sign and we're just going to make a quick text box. Now. Um, I'm talking a little faster because I don't want to take up all your time with this video, but you want to think about your weight of your text box or defining your box so that the students can see it right away. That's just the sandwich right here. In that sandwich, I think we chose two. Um, and then we had, I always do, I like to do a color um, just so that it's kind of like stands out to them. And I'm going to be happy with that. So I just want to, yep, see, just a basic text box. Um, I'm just going to copy that one and paste it for the others. And we'll just drag that right down again. If you want to change the color, it's so easy. Your color, um, your border color is right there. You can just change it. If you wanted to make it thicker, your sandwich button is right there. And again, I'm just going to paste it in order for the students to type. 
you know, this way there's no, there's no excuses. The students need to double click in that text box, put their answer. Um, what I did, I wanted to just share over the summer is we reviewed. So one part of our period was to do the work open your slide, do the work, do the best you can. I always encourage them still to have paper and pencil. So down where the speaker notes is, the box down here, I would always say, use your paper and pencil if necessary or, you know, as needed. Um, I would always just give them some little tips down at the bottom. But then after they did their work, after they plugged in their answer, we actually had um, like a Google Meet where I would share my screen and we would go over these answers and I would pull up my original document and then we would talk about it. And they would have their um, personal slide on their tab so that they can see it. You could also call on a student and say, hey, Billy, you know, share your screen with the class. So all in all, this is basically how how to do it. Some of the important um, key things that we talked about in this video is to make sure you understand your computer snippet tool or screenshot tool. That is totally essential. You could screenshot anything um, and then plug it into a slide in order for the students to type. You're going to make a text box for them. If you're going to put this in your Google Classroom, I could show you that as well. I wasn't planning on it, but let's see. Summer school is over, so I'm not quite sure if um, my Google Classroom is still open. But, um, and by all means, thanks again for subscribing to my channel, Carrie Williams. It's just kind of like my teacher YouTube. Um, all the things I learned along the way, I like to share it with other teachers. Um, and you could stop watching now, but um, if you also want to just see what those, um, what those assignments look like on a Google Classroom and how to assign that Google slide because this is imperative. You don't want to assign that slide to, um, you don't wanna make that slide just viewable. You want to make a copy for each student. So I have no idea if this is still active. Um, obviously, if I'm in classwork, in the classwork area, and I want to make a new assignment, I'm going to click Create. Again, this is from summer school. It might stop working, I don't know. This is like live. Um, create the assignment. So the assignment that you and I just made was um, August 15th measurement. So I'm just gonna make a title really quick. Um, <laughs> Friday, our favorite day of the week. <laughs> and you can just, you know, put I have attached your, you know, Google slide for the day. Um, one, do this, two, do that, whatever, you get it. But most importantly, so you're going to add that, that Google slide that you just made. And most importantly, you want to make a copy of that Google slide for each student. Um, and that Google slide that you that you worked on should be right there. So you're going to use, I selected the one Google slide that we were working on and we're going to just press insert. Now see how it says right here, students can view file. I'm gonna press that drop down, and you're gonna make a copy for each student, okay? Um, and then that's it. You're going to assign like you probably know how to do already, but it's just important to make a copy for each student. Again, thank you so much, guys. I'm gonna stop sharing there and i just wanted to say thank you for watching thank you for subscribing to carrie williams and uh good luck all right bye